Royal families are all the rage right now after the passing of Queen Elizabeth. Just wait until you hear about the royal family of Qatar. The current king, or emir, of Qatar is Tamim Bib Hamad Al Thani. He's had the role since 2013 and is not exactly what you'd expect. On the one hand, he's been the champion of many reforms, both internally, such as with labor rights, and externally with relations with other countries. Still, he's a royal with a massive wealth of 2.1 billion. This puts him at the bottom of the top 10 richest royals in the entire world. So even though he's a head of state with massive responsibilities, you know that he and his family spend that cash like real billionaires. The royal family has been spending big on properties that aren't actually in Qatar. The family has dropped hundreds of millions, acquiring storefronts and properties in the United Kingdom. One notable example is Cornwall Terrace. It is a 13-bedroom, 30,000 square foot, twin-lift mansion that comes with a host of amenities and royal-worthy class. Those amenities include a heated swimming pool, a spa, a gymnasium, a beauty salon, powder rooms, a children's floor, game room, a wine cellar, a staff wing, and so much more. This gorgeous home was purchased for the family for over $200 million. Though honestly, looking at how amazing the property is, I still say they got quite the deal. As far as the royal family's car collection goes, prepare to be shocked. Even by billionaire or royal standards, this family is above and beyond. They pretty much own cars from every big brand you can think of. Let's check them off, shall we? Do they have a Ferrari? Well, we've got a LaFerrari Coupe Red that's worth $1.4 million. Then there's their LaFerrari Aperta, which can go for the shocking price of $5.3 million. Though for their car collection, it's really not so surprising. That's just casual Saturday yard sale money for this family. So what about Lamborghini? They've got a Lamborghini Centenario white coupe that's worth 1.9 million. Then there's the family's other Lamborghini Centenario Roadster that also comes with a $1.9 million price tag. They do like twin cars. What about Mercedes, McLaren, Porsche? I think you know they've got them all covered. They've got a Mercedes G 6x6 AMG worth over 600,000, a McLaren P1 worth 1.1 million, and a Porsche 918 Silver for $2 million. See what I mean? A car worth a few mil is no biggie for them at all. Then there are the Bugattis. I've saved them for last because not only is Bugatti my personal favorite, but they also have some of the most impressive Bugattis ever made. Look no further than the Bugatti Veyron Vitesse Rembrandt Legend. These babies are named like their artwork because they basically are artwork. Not only that, but they have classic artwork prices. One of these cars could cost over $2 million easy. Then there's the Bugatti Chiron Grey that the family has acquired. While this one doesn't sound like a work of art, it still has that Rembrandt worthy price tag. These beauties go for $4.3 million. Those aren't even the top of the line either. The most impressive of the family's rides is the Bugatti Devo. This is one of the rarest cars made by one of the best brands in the entire world. There were only 40 of these cars ever made. They have a 0 to 60 time of 2.4 seconds and a top speed of 236 miles per hour. Each runs for over $5 million. As impressive as that is, the only thing more impressive is that the family owns not one of these absolute beauties, it's that they own two. Not only have they picked up two of these beauties, but they picked them up in the identical powder blue, which is a staple for the family. I mean, are you even a royal family that flexes on all other royal families if you don't have a signature supercar color? 
You just know that they raced these cars at least once. What's the point of having two of the best sports cars collectively worth over $10 million if you don't race them just to see which one hits 236 faster? This family definitely knows that they have the goods too. They are well known for parading their supercars around just to show the world that they have more style than literally anyone else. I mean, wouldn't you? Of course this family has a yacht. I mean, what do you expect them to just fly around the water on a jet ski? They actually own one of the finest yachts I've ever seen. Al Merkab was completed in 2008. It is over 436 feet long, can hold 18 guests and 55 crew members. It has a cruising speed of 18 knots. What's really special about this beauty are its amenities. Evidently, it was considered something of a trailblazer. It features an internal swimming pool with balconies, a gym, a sauna, a salon, fountains, a helicopter pad with fueling stations, multiple entertainment spaces, and probably quite a few that we don't even know about. The coolest amenity this yacht has is that it has its own underwater viewing room. It's at the front of the pool, so when you're swimming in the safety of your yacht, it feels like you're actually swimming in the ocean. What seems to be a favorite of the family is the place's pirate theme. Who would have thought that Qatar's royal family was that into pirates? You just know they've watched Pirates of the Caribbean on this thing. This yacht is worth quite a bit of money too, even compared to other super yachts. This baby is worth well over 300 million. I mean, they can't be seen in a 200 million dollar yacht, that would just be embarrassing. The current Emir of Qatar has the exact same kind of hobby most billionaires in Asia and Europe have. While billionaires in America might be obsessed with space travel, billionaires in most other parts of the world are obsessed with something much more terrestrial, football. This is likely the one passion the Emir has that would rival his royal or religious ones. One of his main tactics for raising Qatar's international profile is through the football world. He is constantly hosting as many football matches in the country as he possibly can. The country has several high-profile stadiums that are the pride of their current Emir. Lusail Stadium is one of their best. It is a big host for the 2022 World Cup. Construction began in April of 2017, and the stadium was eventually finished in November of 2021. It is the biggest stadium for the entire World Cup, capable of seating over 80,000 fans. So how much does a World Cup worthy stadium cost? It was a major expenditure costing upwards of 767 million dollars. Well, you might think that the Emir surely owns the Qatar football club, right? Well, he has purchased a club, but not one in his home country. He has actually purchased the Paris Saint-Germain football club, otherwise known as PSG. He dropped over 70 million to pick the team up. This huge influx of cash made the team the richest in France and one of the richest in the entire world. I bet when this video started you didn't think the King of Qatar and Ryan Reynolds had anything in common. Now you know that they both own football clubs. Though they'll have more in common once Reynolds is inevitably made the King of Canada, you'd know he'd kill that job. If you thought that the royal succession drama in the United Kingdom was worthy of a Netflix series or two, they got nothing on what has gone down in Qatar. Ahmad Ben Khalifa Al Thani came into power in quite the dramatic fashion though not by Qatar standards. Let's just say that his father didn't exactly retire. In fact, he straight up took his father's position in what's known as a bloodless coup d'etat. Something tells me you'll never see Prince William do something like that, no matter how many people might want him to. Once he got into the top spot, he became quite the prolific father. He had three wives and 24 children, 11 sons and 13 daughters. If you're a big fan of the abdication of the throne by King Edward, you might find it interesting to know that the current emir only became the King of Qatar only because his older brother just couldn't be bothered. Evidently, the crown just held no interest for him. Not everybody wants to be king, apparently. His brother, the current emir, definitely was interested, though. In fact, he represented a big change in modern Qatari history by transitioning into the royal role without having to resort to a coup. 
Evidently, he wasn't concerned about his siblings posing any threat to his position. He literally joked about it in an interview, saying, One played too much, the other prayed too much. Even kings have a sense of humor. Guitar's royal family might be one of the richest and most dramatic in the world, but chances are their Netflix series won't be coming anytime soon. Bummer.